Breakthrough Accelerator is a business competition where investors are waiting with checks in hand, $750,000 with which to invest in your business. If you are a maniac on a mission, sign up today at BreakthroughAccelerate.com. You are going to have a blast um, and you're going to learn a ton and your business is going to skyrocket going through this program. We got Dane Maxwell. Welcome. I'm turning this music Oh, up. yeah, Dane. Hey, <laughs> Tom. Good to share it, Kellner. Oh, and oh, oh, my God. You guys are together. Hello, Zoe Nation. Some people got to have it, yeah. Some people really need it, yeah. Listen to me, all do things, do things, do things, do things with it. Ah, welcome to the team. All right, welcome everybody. We are so excited today. Today, our topic, we have a superpower on marketing and sales. I'm Brad Telepo, and I'm here with Breakthrough Accelerate. We have over $750,000 ready to invest in startups. We are a source of capital that is looking to invest in your business with the brightest minds, with those who are looking to make a difference in the world. This is a competition, folks, a competition. You are competing for money while you go to build your business. We only want the people who are committed like no shit, because this is for maniacs on a mission. So we have a four month course. It's experiential. It starts in the fall. And if you'd love to learn more, Candice, we can put in a link to the free consult where you'll talk to one of us so that we could actually answer your questions and uh, have a, just answer all your questions so we could be there one-on-one. -on -one. Well, for now, I would love to introduce to you Dane Maxwell. He is a superpower. He has run multiple successful companies, has a heart of gold, and is so generous. And these are the type of people we want to bring to the plate. Dane, step in, take it over, show us your areas of genius. Well, yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, I always get so nervous when like, it's like, oh, look at this really great, awesome person who just happens to be a middle-class white man that's you know like <laughs> i don't know um i'm happy to, i'm happy to be here guys and i um if you could start if we could start i want to i want each of you to leave feeling really touched and really served here and so if you guys wouldn't mind um i'm gonna go fast and i'm gonna just just try and speak in a way where your brain just isn't the same at the end in a good way towards a couple of really key things that will just unlock a lot of unlock a lot of abundance for you and not like a mental sense of abundance, but a real felt sense of abundance. And it's, it's not, not a joke either. It's like abundance, a very real energy. And when you're operating from abundance, um, well, you're not needy. And then when you're not needy, people just kind of want to give you money. So I want to talk about that. I, I wrote some rules down based on this group, but if you could, um, if it's not too much to ask for you guys, uh, if you'd join me just putting your hand on your body somewhere, uh, your belly, your heart, just connecting right here. And I'd like for you to be real vulnerable, as vulnerable as you're comfortable with, and just kind of type in chat and let me know what's on your mind today. 
what's honestly on your mind today. And um, it can be anything. And just type that in chat because I want to attune to the, to the group here. Thank you. Why does urgency lead to scarcity in my mindset? Self-worth, getting my new Mary Kay business going. Worried about the future. Thank you so much, Evan. <sighs> Feeling a bit of overwhelm, desiring to get back into my magic. Well, with a name like Awakened Sexuality, I think you'll have a good time. Nervousness in leading the webinar for the first time and wanting more than ever to keep making an impact in the world by investing in the conscious game changers. Finding opportunity in uncertain times, wonder and excitement, business, busyness and overwhelmed. Can you, I, I, can, I can feel um, stop existing and start living. Man, you guys are, oof, these are powerful. Um, so let's just take a, let's just take a moment to be brave, to feel, let yourself feel, <clears throat> let yourself feel, it will free the mind to be brilliant. Let yourself, just let yourself feel. <sighs> really take that jaw and let it just, and then take the tension in the face. Let yourself feel. Oh, a really beautiful desires. You guys got a lot, a lot on your mind today. So I'm going to slowly transition like a, a freight train of speed here and um, get you guys going into some really incredible, incredible distinctions that will unlock a tremendous amount of freedom. So here we go. So I'm going to share my screen and do a few do a few drawings for you. Um, I think it helps to add credibility, um, but I have achieved uh, some pretty, pretty remarkable things in my career. I didn't set out to achieve these things, but one of my most proud accomplishments is that I built a fully self-managed company with a CEO that scales and grows without me and requires zero hours of my time per year. I maybe talk to the guy couple times a year, I get a quarterly distribution. Um, I got an offer on that business for $10 million this year, which I declined. And everything that I did to build that, that was the, my seventh attempt, a seventh attempt at a software as a service product. But the, te the tenets and principles I used to build that um, are transferable to helping people solve problems with their parents. You know, um, so I want to, I want to just, um, so I'll share my screen here and, um, and we'll get tabs closed. So our unconscious is very focused. Okay. So I want to show you the Holy grail of business and the way that I see it. And as it relates to protecting your financial future, and really grounding yourself into what matters and, and more importantly, re reaching, reaching the potential that we ache for our, our bodies ache for that. I think everyone in this group. So this is the, um, this is the Holy grail of business explanation. So you, a, a clear customer. Okay. So a clear customer wants a clear result. Okay. So we build, outsource, and provide a clear mechanism. This is everything. Let me see if I can find an arrow or something. This one. Okay. So this is gonna this is this is gonna blow your mind. So watch this. Okay. So let's look at a billion dollar company. Let's look at Weight Watchers. All right. 
Weight Watchers, what's their clear customer? Just someone who's someone who's craving health. Think, yeah, think um, age range. Think demographically. Weight loss, um, 30 to 50 year old white female, um, not morbidly overbeast, but just overweight. Very good. Very good thing. So we're on the right track. So let's just say um, my dream and desire for each of you is to have a succinctness with, with language, to be very clear. And this is a high order. I was, um, so I, I have a book I, I wrote and, and I was getting interviewed for it by this gentleman and he was a multimillion dollar entrepreneur, da, 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 all this crap. And he, um, he had a business and I said, so what are your product offerings? He's like, oh God, it varies, it varies, it does so many things. I was like, okay, um, so tell me about them. And then he talked for like three minutes and I was like, okay, so you have five products that vary anywhere between 500 and $5,000. He's like, oh yeah, that's it. Okay, so tell me about your products. Well, we have five products that vary anywhere between 500 and $5,000. That level of language give you so much peace of mind. And it's not easy to do. That level of language takes work to just speak that simply. So let's say clear customer, women in their 40s, plus or minus 10 years, 30 to 50. Okay. Clear result, lose 10 pounds in a week. If you go to weightwatchers.com, you'll see often it's about losing 10 pounds in a week. That's how they, that's how they rope them in. The clear mechanism is a point counting system. They didn't even invent anything new. They just reorganized caloric information and turned it into points. Okay, so now let's look at Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey is the biggest financial guru in the world. Dave Ramsey's clear customer is couples and families in debt. The clear result is to become debt-free and the clear mechanism is the debt snowball. You guys wanna articulate your business like this. This is the foundation. You're going out into the desert without water and you're gonna die of dehydration if you don't have this in place. Now here's the huge, huge mistake that most every business owner thinks their business is their mechanism. This, that's what they think their business is. Oh, my business is yoga. I'm a yoga studio. My business is yoga. My business is yoga. COVID comes and hits, boom, wipes out in-person yoga. Yoga studio tanks because they think they're in the mechanism business. They're not. They're helping a clear group of people get a clear result, like a young, vital youth energy, being in great shape, these results. But the yoga studio thinks their business is ruined. Well, the mechanism that delivered this result was destroyed, yes. But the result is still there. The clear customer still has a clear result that they want. So. You get these really innovative yoga studios that do virtual Zoom yoga. They innovate the mechanism, still provide the result. This right here is how you just crush it the rest of your entire life in business. You get out of the self-righteous, self-important, self-indignant, oh, my idea, my product, my mechanism, me, my, me, my, me, and then it turns upside down like that. And then you're just, you're just ruined because the business is not about you. It's not about you. It's not about your impact. It's not about you at all. So Brad said, I'm a sales and marketing powerhouse. I am when I'm listening, when I'm letting the customer's result be king, then I'm a sales and marketing powerhouse. There's no tip, tool, or tactic or framework more powerful than letting the customer's result that they want be king. I, I meet you here. I don't have to be a sales and marketing powerhouse. 
I have to be a listener and just find out, look, what result do you want? What's the result that you want? It's, it's not about me at all. My sales and marketing skills are all reliant on how clearly I can, how quickly and clearly I can find this. So let's say we got a clear customer. This is one of my favorite examples, by the way. So let's say we have a clear customer and they're a gray African parakeet owner. Okay. Gray African parakeets are like 1800 bucks. <laughs> they're also beautiful. They sound beautiful. When you hear them sing, they're so beautiful. The clear result. So let's talk to, let's, let's, let's talk to a gray African parakeet owner. We'll say, Hey, how's it going with your gray African parakeet? They're like, Oh, it's all right. You know, it's, well, what are some of the problems you're encountering? They're like, well, it kind of bites me and hurts a lot. Like if I get out of the cage, it'll start biting me sometimes. It, it doesn't really poop responsibly, if you will. Like it just poops everywhere. Like it doesn't poop in the cage. It's just my, my floors are nasty. And then it likes to cuss a lot. And like when my friends are over, it's biting my friends, cussing and pooping everywhere. It's really embarrassing. And you say, okay, well, what dream result would you want in this situation? Obvious answer. Do not assume. Please ask, what kind of result would you want in this situation? What would, you, what would your magic wand result be? What would your genie in a bottle result be? And they say, well, I'd have a parrot that doesn't poop, bite, or cuss. You're like, okay, great. So you got a customer, you got a result. Here's where entrepreneurship really sets in. Because a lot of us think that we can we confuse entrepreneurship with expertise. Like um, we have to be an expert to be an entrepreneur. But entrepreneurs are often not experts. The entrepreneurs with freedom are not often experts. They hire those. They hire experts. They focus on customers, results, and sales. And then they outsource this. That's how the magic happens. So let's say I call a parrot store. When I, I find a parrot store on the Google, good, good Google reviews. I say, hey, do you have a parrot trainer and staff? Like, yeah, can I talk to him? Yeah, okay. Pass me the phone and I say, hey, um, I see you got good Google reviews online. I'm wondering if you train parrots. So like, yep, I do. I train parrots. And say, great. Do you know how to solve problems of biting, pooping, and cussing for gray African parrots? And they're like, yeah. Yeah, I know how to do that. I say, great, I've got um, a group of gray African parrot owners that are having these problems and I'm looking for an expert to teach the content. I'd love for you to teach this and I'll give you 20% of the profit of this business and all you gotta do is get behind a camera and teach. I'll take care of everything else. Like, yeah, absolutely. So they get with their iPhone, something real basic. They record the basic one, two, three, four, five step process to get your parrot to not poop, bite, or cuss. And you send it over on a Google Drive. It's on a Google Drive. Then you send it to your first customer. And, you know, usually your first customer. I don't like to charge my first customer because I'm insecure. Rightfully so. I don't know if it's going to get a result. So I give my first customer usually free. I ask them how much they'd pay for it. Usually they say, oh, I pay 300 bucks for this. I'm like, well, let's just give it to you free. Get you the result first. Once you have a result, then maybe we could charge if you think that's cool. So then um, they go ahead and they get the video Google Drive videos. They're watching them. And they say, you know what, I got a question. So they ask a question, you send it back to the expert, that expert answers that question on video, sends the video back through Google Drive. And now lo and behold, you have um, the, the person has a result with their gray African parrot. Holy crap, it's not pooping, biting or cussing. Ooh, you are in magic territory. You now have a business. All it takes to have a business is one paying customer. All it takes to have a successful business is one paying customer with one result. So now you have a business. Now you're an entrepreneur. Now you have freedom. I saw someone on here wants to get their Mary Kay business off the ground. My advice on doing something like that is to pay attention to how much profit Mary Kay is taking from your effort because they've already created the mechanism for you to sell. My encouragement to the person to doing the Mary Kay is to do this process instead with the same women that you are going to say, sell Mary Kay to. Go to those women that you want to sell Mary Kay to and be like, hey, how's it going? How are you doing during COVID? What's on your mind? What are your goals and dreams right now? What are some of your problems? What would your dream results be? And they'll tell you. And then you're going to go out and find experts that know how to provide that. And then you're going to sell it to them. You're going to make a crap load more money. You're going to own the business and you will have 
you will have rightly so more money and, and then you won't have to like try and sell makeup. Do they want it or do they not? It's, it's, it's this process is so generous and so helpful and it makes so much money. So much money. I did this. Um, so I went and bought my dream car. Uh, it's nothing too fancy. It's a, it's a BMW X6. Really like these cars. And the day I bought it, um, one of my businesses made nine grand that day. Um, and I'll tell you how that happened. I've got these people that are unhappy at their job. They work nine to five. And I ask them, what's your dream result? And they say it in three words. They say, I want to quit my job. <laughs> I remember being so confused because I was like, no, no, it's got to be more confusing and more magical and more special. And no, it can't just be quit. Are, okay, so are you sure it's quit your job? They're like, yeah, dude, that's all I want. All I want is to quit my job. And I was like, okay, are you sure? Yes, Dane, I'm sure. Okay. And so like, what would you pay to do that? Oh, I'd pay thousands of dollars just to quit my job. Okay, so... Now we got a clear customer and they want to quit their job. So now I need a money making vehicle for them to replace their job with. So now I'm hiring an expert for that. So I find a guy, he's making 20 grand a month running Facebook ads for businesses. Beautiful business model. I think it's one of the best business models in the world. You run Facebook ads, you get a Facebook ad working for like a chiropractor in California that one, chiro that one ad works. It provides a profitable customer. That chiropractor is happy. You literally copy paste that 50 different times across the country. You have a multi six figure business rapidly. It's a good business model. I don't know the details to make that happen. I have the principles, but those dirty details that make all the difference. Like he had, um, he was making bank doing Facebook ads for people that had hearing aid companies, hearing aid companies. And his Facebook ads needed to say, come try our free hearing study. And so they'd come in and they'd do a free hearing study. They'd say, how do you feel with this? And how do you feel with this? And they document it. And then of course, when they hear how amazing it is, they're walking out with $4,000 hearing aids. But you know, what's interesting with hearing aids is you can't sell, you cannot easily sell an 80 year old man a hearing aid because he does not want to physically admit that his body's, he's, he's admitting defeat in a way. So ironically, the, um, the op optimum time to sell uh, an 80 year old guy a hearing aid is three months after, unfortunately, his wife had passed away because his wife was his human hearing aid. Oh, what, honey? And so about three months after she's passed away, the guy's like, you know what? I really need you a hearing aid. So these little details, those, those are the details that you need to know that make all the difference. So I don't know those details, so I'm gonna hire out a mechanism. Right. And I, everything I say that with, with tremendous compassion. Um, so this clear, this clear mechanism. So I say, Hey, I got these people that want to learn how to quit their job. You want to teach them this? He said, yeah. I said, great. I'll give you 20% of the profit. All you got to do is teach. He said, yeah. So I went out and we sold three people, a $3,000 product in one day, for example, that was nine grand the day I bought the BMW. So I kept 80% of the nine, but I provide the customer and the person who provides the customer is the king. So it's, you guys think it's this, you guys think it's the mechanism. We, we, we all think it's the mechanism a lot. This, this is where the money is. It's in the idea. Who, the, the, the person who controls the customer is king. So like put, put your hand on your body somewhere and hear that again. The person who controls the customer is king. Just feel that. Like they rule the land, they set the taxes. Think about it. We're Facebook, YouTube. Look at all these businesses just throwing money at them to get those customers. And Facebook and YouTube get to charge whatever they want. Facebook can decline your ad if they want. YouTube can decline your ad if they want. The person who controls the customer is king. So this is so drastically different than the way most of us think about business. We're like, you know, I just want to do my restaurant or I just want to do my... No, 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 no. I have a student of mine. He's got uh, a tool called uh, Profit Per Plate. It helps restaurants calculate the material costs so they can see the profit per plate. 
for the restaurant. It's a really cool, simple tool. So how would you sell that? That's a mechanism, right? So think about it for a second. Let's say your mechanism is a little app that helps a restaurant calculate their profit per plate. Just think about it. Like, so what, what result is that? Well, it's, it's not having to wait for your accountant to tell you if you made money or not, right? It's a, it's a, it's a big deal. But then think about this. Once you know your profit per plate, now you know your most profitable menu items. Now you can redesign your menu to enhance your most profitable items so they're purchased more. Now you can design marketing ads for your restaurant that promote your most profitable food items so people are coming into your restaurant to order your most profitable food. So now you have a profitable, successful, wonderful restaurant. So I mean, the mechanism is a profit per plate calculator, but think about the results. Now he's got, he spent, I mean, he, he started building this before I got the chance to mentor him. So he go, he went ahead and built his mechanism first. Please do not build your mechanisms first. Please, I beg you. You're putting your entire life, financial life, family, everything at risk when you put the mechanism first. And it's so hard not to do it until you get hammered for spending two years building a mechanism when you could have just talked to someone and figured out the result they want first. But this is vulnerable and terrifying to do. So we just have to build this mechanism. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and the, um, the most profitable um, thing you can do in big business is, is build intimacy. Intimacy, we're, we're, we, we have very, very low intimacy in the business world. Um, hey, you bought my product. Great. You happy with it? Great. No intimacy. None. You want to know the thoughts going on? Like, it's like the goal. I mean, let's, let's say, I mean, for the goal, like, you know, say Mary Kay is a big passion. So let's say you just, you know what? I'll do Mary Kay and I'll do this too. I'm gonna do both at the same time. I just love Mary Kay. All right, great. So then the whole goal is like, okay, you're going to buy my Mary Kay? You're going to do this? All right, this is what we all do as business owners. You're going to buy my tool? You're going to buy it or not? 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 And then they buy it. Like, yeah, great. Okay, you go to the next person. You're going to buy it or not? Buy it or not? Intimacy says, how are you doing? What are you thinking about? What are your dreams? What are your desires? And then they tell you. And then with so much relaxed candor, you just speak Im immediately to them. Then they buy your product. Then you say things like, Hey, I know you're um, using Mary Kay. I, I, I know you're buying my software tool. What are some of the things that you're thinking about in addition to this? Like, how's your life doing? Profit rests in this level of intimacy. Profit less rests in this. Financial security and safety. Co COVID is creating millionaires quickly. Someone's got a survival business with survival gear boom, blows up. Like COVID is creating so much. The reason that COVID is creating so much opportunity is because COVID is creating so much pain for so many people. So you're going to go out and just start talking to people. You're going to ask them, what are your problems? What are you thinking about? What are your issues? What are your dreams right now? And then you're going to see, you're going to say, okay, I've got your problem is this. I've got your result is this. I'm going to go and find an expert who can help. And I'm going to give them a piece of the business. So I'll give you another quick example here. So a guy got his PhD. And then he went to go back to work in Bangladesh. And when he's working at Bangladesh, as a, as a, as a professor, just like a mile away in, in Africa, I, I don't know where Bangladesh is, but it's, it's, it was a mile away from where Bangladesh was. There was so much poverty. There was a community of people. And these people were able-bodied, well-working citizens, and they just needed money. Like a lady needed like five cents to buy the materials for her 10 cups to sell them, but she didn't even have five cents to buy those. So she'd get money from loan sharks that would charge a thousand percent interest. That's a ton. That's a lot of percent. So like they'd be, they would be in debt for like five years. So this guy would walk around, this PhD, College, like, like, think about this, guys. Like, this is how selfish we can be without knowing it. And there is, I think, 
there's beneficial selfishness and there is just blind selfishness. This guy has dedicated his life to the university, has his PhD. Then he goes out and he asks these folks and he finds out this village, all they need is 40 or $50. That's it. An entire village needs 40 or $50 and they would have the tools they need to buy the supplies they need to thrive. So he goes to the banks in Africa and he says, hey, will you guys give 40 or $50? They laughed him out of the bank. They said, no collateral, no loan. <laughs> so he went back and he went to sleep that night, except he couldn't sleep because he was heartbroken that able-bodied people couldn't get 40 to $50. Clear customer, people in poverty in Africa, clear result. They just need a few bucks. The clear mechanism alone and they wouldn't give it to him. So that guy said, enough. And he started a bank that is now a billion dollar bank. It's called Grameen Bank. It's a very famous bank, Grameen Bank. And he did that by putting other people first above his ideas. He got his PhD, he was in college. He was studying all this and he said, you know what, people are more important than me. So he went and did this and this. He built a billion dollar bank. This is what entrepreneurship's about. It's about the exhilaration of serving someone. Dane, and it is exhilarating. Yeah. Dane, there's a question from the audience. Mindy, yeah. would you like to ask you a question? Yeah, please. Anybody, yeah, I'm ready. Yes. Yeah, so um, during this time, we've always I'm in New Orleans. We're still pretty much on lockdown, social distancing. Yeah. Um, I am wondering how you connect with new people during this time here. To yes. Are there, expand. are there people that you just love hanging out with? Like you, whenever you're around them, you're like, these are my people. Yeah. Who are they? Well, I mean, like my friends from church, um, some people that I work with when we're actually working. I, I'm not, I, I manage an art gallery also right now, mm -hmm. but, but mm -hmm. I'm not working currently because of COVID. Okay. That, well, thanks for the question. So um, I want to make sure I understood that. So people from your church and then folks related to the art gallery, those were the two groups that you kind of feel enjoyment around yes okay so you go um wow um there's probably a lot of pain that churches are currently experiencing because of covid and if you were to create like a a facebook group a discussion platform for churches and you were just to go right here in your heart and you say, you know, the message of God needs to be shared no matter what the search circumstance of our economy is. Please join this network of Facebook group of pastors, all discussing the best ideas for their churches to thrive during COVID. And now you got a Facebook group and you're deriving all this value for them and you're listening and you're in there every day and you're sparking thoughtful questions like, what was the number one thing you did in the last 30 days that helped your church during COVID? What's your honest, honest fear right now during COVID? And then you're just like waking up, living, breathing every day, serve these pastors, serve these churches, serve these pastors, serve these churches. Nothing stops me. Nothing stops me. I will serve. I will serve. And so then they start sharing and all this. And then you start combining all their answers. And now you're combining these answers into a book. And now this book goes out on Amazon. And now you're actually generating some profit, driving real value for pastors. And you just get the chance to be a humble facilitator, a humble, a humble server, and you're, and you're just right here with Facebook groups with churches, if that's, if that's your calling. Now, let's say, you know what, you're like, no, my potential is even more, more, more than that. So I got churches. I'm also going to do a Facebook group for how artists are figuring out how to survive during COVID. That's a big one. And there are, so you create a Facebook group for that. And you have discussions and you have panels and you have live Zooms and you're just giving and you're giving and you're giving. And before long, artists are going to be like, I need to pay you. I want to pay you. You're giving me results. I use this idea. You've got, you've got families that are like, I don't know, there's a piece of art that it, like an artist can go to a family. You could, I mean, you could teach artists to put people ahead of their own expression. And then for now, 
and they go into a family and they interview a family and they figure out the dynamic of the family and they figure out the pain and they figure out the emotion. And then they go and they create a custom piece of art for that family as an anchor for the, for the reminder of COVID and to see, and to still see the positive during COVID. And now artists are like going out and saying, can I create art to bring your family together during COVID? Or you, you just, you, you get people's focus away from this because survival feelings are so powerful. They kick us into me, 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 my, 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 how can I, how can I, how can I? And so we take a deep breath and we say, no, serve and put the other person first, obsess with them. And I will just finish by saying that I have a friend of mine. He, he made a million dollars selling a word doc of Google recipes. A word doc of Google recipes, a million bucks. And it was a word doc. He didn't even like, <laughs> he didn't even turn into a PDF. He didn't design it. He didn't try to make it fancy. He didn't, he just gave people what they were asking for. He had a little blog, a food recipe blog. He's like, all my recipes are all around my site. They're like, no, I just need it in one location. Can you just give it to me in one location? He's like, sure. Million bucks at that. He got a big ego after that. And he fell off. He fell from grace, so to speak. And he started designing all these clever products, clever brochures, clever designs. He could never even get close to making a million dollars again. Because anytime he made himself more important than the people he was serving, making money was extremely difficult and very nebulous and very hard and almost impossible. Anytime he made the person more important than himself, Gray Mean Bank is born. Word Doc Recipes is born. So in your heart, you have my permission to serve. You have everyone's permission to serve. We need your help. Create this group. Live events are nuts. Zoom events are nuts, like good power. There's, that's my answer for you. Thank you for okay, asking. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I will do it. Yeah, Michelle, that sounds really cool. So, I have a question too. Yeah, please. So um, I am involved in an amazing business um, that has, um, it's got, it's multifaceted in layers. And one of the, the businesses that, um, that um, is present currently is a nonprofit organization. And a lot of um, the biz, I mean, a lot of the funding comes from um, donations. And so my question is, how do I um, overcome that feeling um, of people are, um, I just feel like people are worried right now about not only um, about their financial circumstances, and how do I um, overcome the feeling of, um, I kind of have this, um, this feeling of not wanting to um, approach them due to the current circumstances as far as donations and everything else because I just don't want to come off as um, not being sensitive to, the, to, to COVID and the current circumstances that we're in. Thank you for the question. How fast are you going right now? I don't know. I'm not looking at my speedometer. <laughs> I'm looking at you. <laughs> oh, God. Careful. Um, so I don't know the answer to that. And I think that the, I think that you might have the, you might with a, with a, if you set a 10 minute timer, you get 10, you give yourself 10 minutes and the timer's on for 10 minutes and you have that question in front of you. I think that with your experience and your felt sense of that world will actually create something way more elegant than I could make up. Now, um, I do think that that question is on the mind of a lot of nonprofits right now. And so I think if you wrote that question out as a letter from your heart, a cry from your heart, like, how do we do this? And you brought nonprofits together to all discuss that question with like a Facebook group or a mastermind group or Zoom calls all of, of, of people. And then you could actually be at the heart of, of helping solve that problem for others as you do yourself. Yeah. And Dane, may I speak into that for yep. a minute? In my experience, something that I learned from Gary Vee 
that very much ties into this, Dane, is intimacy. You know, what is happening in this other person's world? And as I've gone to go do charity money, random sponsorships, even building my own consulting business uh, around like efficient operations, leading with the question of how can I support you? How can I add value? And when it comes from that energy, the donations that comes that come through as a result of real world conversations. So I could actually see what's happening in their world so that I could also just offer my time and that generosity. Yes, it's a slower path, but it's the right path. And as a result of that, even charitable donations come back geometrically. So tying this all back in is your theme is how are we here to serve? How can I support you? And when we go to lead with that question, especially from a place of charity and business, it's amazing the doors that open up. Thank you. It is. Dane, we, we have another question from um, Awaken Sexuality. Do you wanna ask the question yourself or I can, uh, I, I can try to translate? Come on, Mika. Is that Mika? Yeah. <laughs> Am I unmuted? Yeah, there you are, yes. girl. Oh, perfect. Thank you. I'm so grateful to be here. I, yeah, I was just realizing the mechanism piece, putting that first. And um, thankfully, before I built the mechanism, realized that I will be hindered in, in Facebook ads because I work with men on sexuality and overcoming erectile dysfunction. And um, I'm just hindered at marketing at every step of the way because that's um, really hard to find ways to advertise. So I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that, Dane. Um, if I type in erectile dysfunction in Google, it seems to be fair game. In Google, yes. In Facebook, uh, not so much. Yep. So don't do it in Facebook. Okay, so would you then recommend um, getting my website up and running? Because I own awakenedsexuality.com, but everyone told me, like, don't work on the website. The website's not important. Just use your social media. Um, but I'm being hindered at marketing it on social media. <laughs> How many customers with results do you have currently? I've worked with over 100 men that have gotten results, but that's been on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So I wanted to create a pre-recorded course. Yep. Um, so this is amazing. Um, mm -hmm. how, um, be honest with this because knowing with honesty, it can change. Um, how much control are you willing to let go of? Um, as much as is needed. <laughs> okay. Um, what if it's what if the course isn't uh an, is, is isn't the sweet spot yes for these men would you be open to another delivery yeah absolutely okay so like um how do you how do you find these hundred men um, I have been teaching Tantra courses around the world. So a lot of them through that, I, I just have a big community in the Tantra scene. So um, Facebook has this really interesting effect where we think it's like the center of the world. Um, and like the only place to advertise is there. Um, I think um, you want to look for, so if you want to really entrepreneur this, um, I would hire a copywriter to write your sales letter for the product before it exists. Mm -hmm. um, I would make the product um, an audio only meditation, et cetera, that men could even listen to while they're in the act with women who love them. Um, so, and it, it's like uh, the first of its kind that's ever done anything like that. Because the, the trauma typically comes up in the moment, no matter how much work they do it. it usually, that's how I, you, you know more about this than I do. But mm -hmm. the, sa the sales letter doesn't necessarily need to talk so much about the mechanism. 
but I'd hire a copywriter, three to five grand, writes you a sales letter. I'd get the, I'd get a designer that designs you a nice sales page. I'd find a media buyer that um, that's not like Facebook that knows how to buy YouTube media, online banner ads and Google ads. And I would start experimenting and I would expect to experiment like 10 times. I would run 10 different ads, 10 different things. You know, I just tried running some YouTube ads for the first time. I spent like 500 bucks and got one lead. So I paused that. Mm -hmm. um, right. So that that's one experiment. I got nine more to go. Um, so think of it as iterative. Don't look at Facebook. Okay. Most of what I use EFT. So I already, what I do is there's no one else doing this in the space. Um, and it is like healing the trauma because you're absolutely right. It is usually from past traumas. And then I also make, um, like self pleasure meditations for men because I tried to find some and what is available is <laughs> not, not what you want. <laughs> so that's what I do one-on-one, -on -one, but yeah, I'm just desiring to scale so that it's more, um, it gets out there and people get to have more incredible sex lives. Yeah. So and, and Mika, one idea that I think we've discussed is what if you did Facebook lives with the men and they can still be off camera, they can still change their name, whether maybe you could pick one, one a week, maybe you could do a group. So there's great ideas that you get to play with. And what I love about you, Mika is, you know, your vision is just bringing healthy sexuality and partnership. Like it's one of life's greatest joys. So that's why I appreciate what Meek is bringing to the world. And Joe also put it into the chat. You know, what if you went with relationship counselors? You talked to different people in therapy who are with people who are struggling with it. Like you get to be the natural Viagra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm complete. So um, Mika, with something like this, I wrote down. Uh, so what I wanted to say was, so rule number one for everyone here is don't need anything from anyone. Mm -hmm. So set yourself up so you don't need, set yourself up so you don't need any of Brett's 750 grand mm -hmm. or Brad, Brad, sorry. Um, I don't know how the heck that Brett came out of my mouth there, Brad. Um, so set yourself up so you don't need anything from anyone. That's, that's when everyone will get, try to give you money. Like that's when investors, like when you don't, when they don't, when you don't, when you don't need them, they're like, Oh God, here, take my money. Yeah, um, I don't really need any investors. Well, but right now you do need stuff. You need a customer acquisition system. You need someone to help you get your customers. You need these kinds of things. Like you're in, you're in a situation where you're somewhat dependent. Mm -hmm. Because you're, you know, obviously you don't have experience yet or whatever. That, that's fine. Um, but you want to think about this in a situation. So like um, Joe has got an idea for target relationship counselors for referrals. Well, now you're dependent on relationship counselors if you do that. And it's, 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 it's a nice thing to add to the funnel, but you want to not need anything from anyone. So when you're building this, that's, it's, it's a, it's a very, um, it's a very unique energy. It, it, it's a, it's, it's, it's a form of, it's a form of self kindness. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, even a, if you like try to advertise on Facebook, you're now still dependent on Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 it's not an easy thing to think about, but it's like, I've got a software as a service business that makes $2 million a year easy day night rain shine no matter what google's doing no matter what the economy is doing no matter what facebook's doing it's just like a fully autonomous beast very independent and i don't know if i did that on purpose but looking back on hindsight i'm like oh this is this is really cool um and that's that's a position that's a position you want to put yourself in so if that's the position you want to put yourself in, you want to ask yourself, how can I find an endless supply of dudes who struggle with erectile dysfunction? That's your question. How can I find an endless supply of dudes who struggle with erectile dysfunction? 
Well, I know a lot of people, lot, there, there are uh, men on Reddit that talk about this. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one place I know. Um, I know that YouTube's pretty lenient with video ads. And I know that you can run banners or on the internet where your target demographic is. Cause you got these hundred men, you're gonna, all you need to really do is look at these hundred men, find the common demographics, common traits, common books they read, common interests they have. Cause you might find these, these hundred men, they all really like listening to Jordan Peterson or something on YouTube. <laughs> you know, so like- ideal. So, so, <laughs> something random like that. So now you've got a video ad that goes in front of every Jordan Peterson video. Um, but that that's like, so look at your hundred dudes, figure out their common traits, ask yourself where they hang out, ask yourself, where can I find endless supply of dudes? I'm also inclined that you might want to just try and I think event-based marketing is really, really good for stuff like this. So you have like a 30 day erectile dysfunction challenge and you know and you've got ads going out and then you give these men like maybe five day erectile dysfunction challenge and then at the end of the five days you can upsell them into this eft course mm, okay i think that would be a real good way to do it okay yeah. so like a free facebook group course and then upsell at the end yep brilliant they're, they're, they seem to be the most effective marketing uh, vehicles right now. And I have a, I have a tool that we're designing um, that I'd be happy to let you try out for free uh, one time with that group that actually holds people accountable to the steps and allows you to track their work and progress along the way inside that group. Oh, wow. That. Yeah, I would love that. Is it similar to Vimify? I haven't seen Vimify. I'll have to check it out. Okay. Are you the Mika I know from San Diego? I am. Okay. All right. Yeah. So um, since you guys are both local, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you that you follow up afterwards, Mika. Thank you so much for the question. We've got several so entrepreneurs on the line. So I uh, just want to make sure that we have space for, this is great coaching. Thank you so much. Um, who else has a question for, for our amazing facilitator today? Michelle, Eric, Doug. Loti, April. We know you do. This is worth thousands of dollars of free coaching. Can you? I can went. You guys, I sorry, went Brad. to. Yeah, I volunteered once just to go be at the event that Dane was teaching at, just so I could listen for an hour. And he was my first ticket to high ticket coaches. So come off mute. Let's ask questions for him. He's April, a, I have a question. Oh wait, I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, was, Michelle, that's great. I just saw April's comment. April, do you want to come on off mute and share your question? Yeah. Hey, Dane. Great oh my gosh. Hi, April. <laughs> um, also still in San Diego. Actually, I moved back up to Encinitas. So I'm, I'm actually probably going to follow it, the similar advice that you gave to Mika. I'm working on my niche market are um, busy professionals. Um, I, I help busy professionals prevent burnout. So I'm doing a, a product, my, I'm planning on an info product. So a digital, digital content, um, content. So I'm taking people through a group program now and I have a, a program that it's kind of, I'm calling nourish to flourish. And this is the foundation. The next one or from here on, I'm really focusing on preventing burnout and uh, self-care practices, obviously. And so I'm planning a recorded series that I can post online and sell over and over again. So I think I should follow similar advice that, to what you gave Mika and um, what you said you have for her. I'm curious what that is and if you can share that with us as well. I'd be happy to. So um, uh, it's so good to see you, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I'm gonna share my screen. So here's the four erectile dysfunction ads, by the way, Mika. Um, big old stuff like Google's a great like selling to humiliating problems is a very nice recipe for a great business like erectile dysfunction credit score repair mm -hmm. uh, not being able to get pregnant these function these, these kinds of painful issues that create humiliating pain for people like those are amazing things to solve um, 
here's, here's the, here's all you ever need to do for marketing. So you've got a customer, they've got a clear pain. Um, you get them a clear result. Then you just, all you ever have to do is tell the stories of your clients. That's it. You don't have to talk about yourself, April. You don't have to talk about your credentials. All you, and, and Mika, you don't have to say a damn thing about yourself. You don't have to say anything about yourself. You're just gonna tell a hundred stories of dudes who are now rocking women's lives, have improved physical self-esteem, et cetera. Mika, you don't need to tell anything about yourself. So um, these, and, and I think there's probably with some, with, with some creativity, there's probably side doors that you could find with Facebook ads with erectile dysfunction, but you'd need to hire a great marketer for that. But this, for example, you got that parrot, parrot's biting and pooping. Now the parrot doesn't bite or, bite or poop. Now you're like, I got to tell you about this person so-and-so. They had a gray African parrot it was pooping everywhere. It was biting them. Look at, here's the, here, it left marks on their arm for weeks. But now the parrot's a joy to be around. It sits on their arm okay. It doesn't poop on them or it doesn't bite and da-da-da-da. Listen, this is an amazing thing. And all they had to do for this was they had to enroll in my program and follow this blah, blah, blah process. And so um, that's why the result is so important to understand. And as soon as you get your first customer a result, that, um, that becomes a story you tell. And then you don't have to brag about yourself or do any of this stuff. So um, that's how you want to do your marketing. So um, you do your challenges, you know, from burnout to non-burnout, going into your Facebook group challenges. Those can all start with a story of someone who's on the brink of blah, had a blah, tra had, had not on the brink of something, had an epic transformation and they did it by doing your burnout thing. And you don't have to talk about yourself. So that's, this is, I'm actually creating a, entire system right now called the number one way to market your business course or coaching practice without exhaustion. And that is to identify your top transformations, turn those transformations into stories, run those stories into ads to similar people. It's like crack. It's crazy powerful. The similar people are reading the same story. They're like, Oh my God, I'm this person. Oh my God, they got this result. Oh my God, can I get it too? And then you create a good fit quiz, which assesses their risk level to get a result with you as well. So then you assess and have them go through like a five, six, seven question process. And if they answer that incorrectly, you can say you have a high risk, get a result, it's probably not gonna work out for you. Oh, you have a low risk, you're great, you should come and move forward with us. Um, and that's all, um, that'll, be out, that'll be out soon too. But I mean, you don't need to, that's, that's a high level. Identify top transformation, tell the stories, put those stories in front of similar people, put an assessment of a quiz that, you know, do you have two hours a day? Do you have any discipline at all? You know, do you have a desire at a 10 out of 10 to do this? Do you like, you know, they're like, yes, yes, yes. You're like, great. You're in, ah, oh, your desire is a five out of 10. You know, you're probably just going to waste your time. Don't do it. Um, so that you can set up a marketing system like that, April. And then you're just, it's, it's really the unconscious desire that I have. And I think a lot of us have to just super impress people with our amazing programs it just turns on immediately when we talk about our business. You sort of like disarm and dismember it and you just become a storyteller and let your customers be the hero. And you can stop that. And it's a, it's a, it's a lived experience. I'm trying to learn how to do this. So I've got a, a group of entrepreneurs that I mentor and they're amazing, about 50 of them. And they are scared of selling. They have fear of sales. And so I'm like, who here has a fear of sales and wants to transform that? And they're like, all these peaks. I'm like, <laughs> and so I'm like, listen, guys, let's do this. Like, let's do a fear from fear to love sales challenge. Okay. And so here's what we're going to do to get good at sales. You just need to practice. That's it. So you're going to practice with each other. You're going to do 10 practice sessions with a spin selling framework. You're going to do 10 practice sessions with the challenger sale framework. And you're going to do 10 practice sessions running consultative selling. You'll do 30 practice rounds with 10 different sales frameworks. Your whole brain will transform. You'll go from fear to love with sales. I didn't create the sales training, April. I get got the three best books. I'm having students read the books and summarize them into a process that they can do. I'm literally doing almost nothing. And I'm facilitating these people in this transformation. I don't even have the I'm not even, I'm not, see, I'm not, I'm outsourcing the mechanism. I'm having my students who paid me, who are now actually, there you go, 
who now are getting more out of it because they're it's it, there's like what we can do with our mind with a little creativity is still astounding me but it's pretty powerful um because so for these uh okay very briefly i'll just show that result jam board um and then please ask your next question while I'm, while I'm loading this up. Michelle was next with her question and then Doug after Michelle. Great. Okay. So here is um, a result jam board here. So I've got all my members will be in this list right here, April and Mika. And their first step is the 10, 10 spend selling practice calls. Their next step is 10 challenger sale practice calls. And their third step is 10 consultative. And then their final step is they've done their 30 practice sales calls. In order to submit these steps, they click on this. They'll see everybody else who's completed it. They'll upload a screenshot of the person they talked to. And so there's proof that they've done it. And so like, this is the tr progress tracker. It holds them accountable. There's a, there's a timer for this. So if they don't get it done in time, they're flagged in front of everybody else that they didn't get it done. And other people can encourage them. Hey, encourage, 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 help them get it done. So that's result jam in a nutshell. If anybody wants um, to use it anytime, I'm happy to let you guys try it out for free while we're still building the beta just let brad or anybody know um so let me know the um next question from michelle no yeah. hi um hi Hello. dane um, great content i really appreciate everything that you're sharing and um, have already taken away a lot i uh the question that i have is that the product that i am um that i am or the the results that I'm trying, that I'm hoping to achieve for a customer of management or um, business owners that have employees that um, are now having to come back to work after COVID and all the political unrest, I'm sure that there are um, environments that might have high tension. And um, I wanted to uh, go in there and help to um, kind of ease that by helping to show them the commonalities that they have. Of as far as people and keep and um, I guess I've I have my purpose line in a world suffering from deep discord vision board music brings the big picture to harmonious fruition for your company through the people who communicate the most your employees and your customers um, so basically uh, I think that a lot of people need to quiet the mind and reflect and heal and then hustle I think that companies have an opportunity to help empower employees uh, by helping them to look within and kind of see the bigger picture and keep the outcome. Can I um, pause you? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I, <laughs> I've, I've, I've got, I've got what you, I've got, I think I've got your question. Um, okay. Beautiful mission. Um, it could have a dramatic impact on the world. If you're able to pull this off, this would be a, this would be a quite a, be some good karma, I think. Wow. Thanks. So, right. I mean, you've got, let me say you help a hundred businesses have a harmonious workforce when they come back. How the ripple effect of that would be very difficult to measure. It would be so big. So it's really cool. So can you tell me, what do you think the number one thing a business owner is going to want when they bring their employees back? Like the, like the thing that's on their mind, like this is what I want. They're going to want um, people that are great customer service that give great customer service to their, to their clients. I mean, that's what I would think that they would want. They would want a good environment so that their clients could come in and feel that positivity and make it a good environment for the, the customer too, if that makes sense. Yes. It's not bad. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, I don't, I don't think, um, I don't mean to put you on the spot or anything. I think what uh, that question would be good to ask yeah and see what's okay. the number one thing on your mind as you're bringing your company back and your employees back okay um they'll you'll get you'll start to get a common thread and then um you know and so it's how to quickly heal and triple the productivity of your employees when they return from covid Right, it's not about vision boarding. That, that that's mechanism, which would create an epic result. But you you want to figure out the result that a business owner is after when they return from COVID, and then you plug your you plug your mechanism in. So there's um, um, there's there's a concept that it's like easy money and hard money, and easy money happens uh, when 
the person's got a very serious problem over here and they have a pre-existing desire in their mind. Like they've already decided that they want something and then you just slip right in and you're the bridge. Okay. Um, a lot of business owners mm -hmm. are trying to plug in and there's no bridge. <laughs> right. There's no, cause they don't have the pre-existing desire. They're like, oh, vision board, this and this and all this. <laughs> And this, all this stuff, and they're like, I, I, I don't have this. So you're like, you're, there's no, there's no plug. That makes sense. Right. Okay. So, um, so th I got a buddy who's got a product called Thirty Seven Days to Better Credit. Okay, so they've got bad credit. It's humiliating. It, it's it's like it's an identity. Like it's like ah, uh, <laughs> they already have in their mind. I want better credit. It's already there and it's strong. So he just goes shoot, done. Okay, you have women who are trying to get pregnant who can't, and they want children so bad. And every day that they're not, it's just, it's like their biological clock's ticking. It's tremendous. They're like, I want kids. So you're like, Shh. so now I had a business um, and it was teaching people how to build software companies, but nobody wanted a software business. So I had to install the desire first. I had to install the desire for my quote unquote vision board first. So what I did is I said, do you know the most important word in business? It's not freedom. It's not desire. It's not persistence. It's not hustle. It's not profit. It's not employees. It's not. And before I tell you the answer, let's look at three experts and see what they have to say on the matter. Here's what expert one says. Here's what expert two says. Here's what expert three says. They say all these things because of the one word and they still didn't reveal the word yet. Like, oh my God, what's this word? Three minutes in, I say the most important word in business is predictability predicting sales, predicting profit, predicting hires, predicting success, predicting the product's going to work. If you can do that accurately, you have a lot of success. Guess what? Software as a service is the most predictable revenue of any business model that exists. It sells for the highest valuation because people want that business because they know the revenue is certain. Now I did that. Now I just planted the seed for the desire. Then I slipped my product right in there. Boom. And I had like an $800,000 uh, payday in a week selling 400 people, uh, $4,000. That's the 1.2 million. They're on 336 people bought three to $4,000 and an $800,000 payday um, doing that. But I had to install the desire first. Mm -hmm. So I do install like vision board, no software, no, but you know, do you want to know the most important word for your business when you return from COVID? Do you want to know what it is? Well, it's not this. It's not going to be this. It's certainly not this. And you know, it's not this. And even though you probably want it to be this, it's not that either. Let's go look at what some of the three, the most um, sought out business experts in the world have to say about this matter. And then like it comes down you say, the most important thing is employee safety. Employees that feel safe will thrive. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah. Right? So I'm kind of winging it, but it seems like, you know, it's a Maslow's. <laughs> It's, it's Maslow's hierarchy. So now it's safety. Yeah. So how do you create safety? Well, well, this X, Y, Z process that you have. That's and fantastic. Now you, and now you get to wake up in the morning and be like, I get to help people feel safe today. That's right. That's powerful. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. We have, we, I think we have time for one more question, and this is from Doug. Hey, Dane. Um, You're on mute, Doug. I could just hit the space bar and work around. Anyway. Uh, first of all, I just want to say uh, thank you, Dane. This is absolutely melting the edges of my brain like a like a mental grilled cheese, and it's awesome. Wow. Um, my uh, my question is: What I do is I run a cartoon studio. Um, I am absolutely always stuck in story, uh, which you know, you know, in BBA speak, it's not good. But I'm just you know, I'm basically an artist. So what I my mechanism is selling stories, like animated stories, um, and I've never really been able to reconcile how that works as a business model. I have always felt like the weird one who doesn't really understand the whole premise of business. So I guess what I'm trying to do, figure out is the mechanism. Um, 
And so what's landing for me is, is when you're saying, you know, uh, you have a clear customer, you have a clear result, you have a clear mechanism. Um, I, I understand what I'm creating, but I guess from a standpoint of understanding that as a mechanism or understanding how that fits into a process. Who are your favorite businesses to work with? Your favorite clients that you've written stories for? Um, well, largely it's, I, I teach animation to school kids. Um, I put out stories on YouTube. Um, I've published uh, novels, self-published novels, and I see how it all comes together. So the clear customer, I guess, isn't so clear to me. I mean, unless it's the people buying the story. Well, where do you feel most welcome when you're talking to people? Like, who are the people that you're, they just get you, love you, receive you? It's not hard. Um, well, I, you know, I'm a promoter. So anytime I sit down and talk to somebody, I'm just always like, Hey, you know, like you want to hear a crazy thing that happened. And, you know, so turning that talent and connecting that with my, you know, artistic abilities, um, I, I feel comfortable just when I'm talking to people, even one-on-one, -on -one, which is different than creating a story with a production team and then putting the content out there for people to enjoy. Would you say your life purpose right now is to help transform hearts with good stories? Um, it's twofold. It's to trans It's to tell good stories to inspire the adventures of tomorrow. Um, when I was in DBA, um, the breakthrough. One of the breakthroughs I had was uh, determining that the story that I'm working on now, uh, which is a sci-fi story, that the the purpose of the story is to inspire the children who will one day walk on other worlds. And that was, okay, that was a big aha moment. Um, you know, ultimately- let, let me pause you for a sec. Yes. Okay, so thank you. So um, what would you think of doing a story um, that is like, are these like kind of like sort of comic-ish drawings? Yes. Absolutely. Wonder wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Like so, Saturday morning cartoons anywhere. But wonderful. So on the left-hand side is a story of how Japan is handling COVID. And the like some miraculous of only 1,000 cases of COVID, not even deaths. So a story of how Japan is handling COVID here on the left. A story on the right-hand side of how America is handling COVID the deaths, the rate, the selfishness, the arrogance, the greed, the self-centeredness, just the depressing behavior of America with COVID. On the left, you've got Japan, a thousand cases, not even deaths. And everybody's wearing masks, nobody's prideful, they're being respectful and safe. And then you've got over in America, people are just lost. So you, you, you draw these stories up. This becomes your lead magnet. This becomes your forward foot forward, your forward foot. And you become for the next six months only a storyteller to save humanity by changing critical behavior that could save hundreds and thousands of lives. And you draw this story up and you have your little, you have your little website in the bottom right corner and you say, looking to change behavior, question mark, hire me to tell your story. Now in the lower right hand corner of that, that's gonna take them to a nice landing page. It's very simple, it opts in with you, it says, I'm a storyteller to help save humanity. Um, enter your email to inquire about work. They enter your email. Now you've begun a, a sales process and you're just doing this only for the next six months. And um, then you can return to this vision that you have about inspiring the future of children and all this, that stuff you can return after six months. But the, ne the next six months, you're gone. You're not here your gift is channeled towards the crisis in front of us and you'll use that. And I think people will beat a path to your door and hire you and pay you good money to create stories that like the, that kind of rock this transformation. 
mind blown. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And this will be a great service for you. So now because there's a, there's a story in Africa where they, um, like men were just having sex with women without condoms and AIDS was getting transferred everywhere. And men were like, I'm not wearing condom. I don't need condom. I'm da, da, da. And it was just awful. And they hired a, a storytelling company to craft a story that went across the radio. And it wasn't even animated. And the story was so powerful that men were so embarrassed to be associated with the guy that would abuse women in that way that they literally transformed condom use. It was a simple story on the radio. And they even did a, a, a closed study where they didn't run the story in a certain part of Africa so they could t check, check the data. They sort of tested it. And lo and behold, the people that didn't hear the story, of course, didn't change their behavior. So you are, I mean, Jesus is remembered for his stories. You have, you have the gift that is, will be remembered thousands of years from now. So use it and have, yeah, that's it. Okay. Wow. Thank you. That's, that's pretty awesome. Good. Yeah. Thank you, Doug. And we get to start our wrap up process. Dane, thank you so much for being here. This value that you offer, your come from, your vision in changing the world. Dane, you're up to some other big things right now. You know, how can we find you? I believe you have a book coming out as well. So support us in finding you and supporting you. Thank you. So um, two things. Um, so I have a book. Um, you can get it right now. Um, if uh, you'd like, you just have to pay shipping and handling. And then there's some upgrades through that funnel, but you don't need to buy any of them. The book is all you need. The book's not a sales pitch for anything else. It's 302 pages of how to start from zero effectively. It's, um, it's just something that you want to, it's a treasure for your heart to read that book. Um, and it, it builds your, it builds your brain so that you just can operate with safety um, and not, not be in a state of terror or fear. I mean, COVID hits and I'm like, all right, let's find the new mechanism because I got the mind for it. And when COVID hits other people, they're like, oh, it's all is ruined. All is no, 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 we don't want to do that. So you can, you can build that brain by reading the book, start from zero.com, start from zero.com. And then you can click on the, get the book free plus shipping. Um, there are examples of people that are making three grand with the book. One guy made 22 grand during COVID selling virtual graduations to high schools, like during COVID like so much opportunity, so much literal abundance you'll get exposed to through the book start from zero.com. Um, if you're interested in the student student progress and result tracker, just go to resultjam.com and put your name in there and we'll talk with you about the transformation you're wanting to provide and see if we can help you in increasing those transformations for those people. That's resultjam.com. And then lastly, um, today I'm running a three hour workshop at two o'clock in an hour and a half ish. And it's a three hour workshop on the three most important skills for wealth, which are um, rapidly finding painful problems, rapidly writing sales letters to sell solutions and practicing selling them. If you can experience, and it's, it's a, you go to breakout rooms and you ask each other questions to find your problems. You ask each other questions to find the dream solutions. Then you go to breakout rooms to practice writing a sales letter to sell it. And then you go to breakout rooms to even practice selling that with one another. So you literally leave in three hours practicing this stuff. You leave in three hours. Some of you will leave with a business idea in hand. And those of you that don't will leave with the skills to find them rapidly. That's a paid workshop. That's three hours. We have around 25 or so people in that right now. We, we, can, we can fit as many of the more people in here. That's $99. That's today. That's at um, two o'clock. Um, and I'll get, let me grab the link um, to that registration page. So what we, you, guys, you guys would see me for three more hours. But I think the um, I think the the most exciting thing about this workshop is before you go into the breakout rooms. So there's 32 people attending this workshop currently. Yeah. And hey, Dane, just because we have a few minutes left, we'll post okay. the link uh, into the comments. So um, before I wrap up, I just want to thank you again and your success and your track record is just impeccable. And when we asked you to come on board to share your experience and your wisdom, 
it was a quick, absolutely, how can I support? How can I serve? And I just so appreciate that. Like, that's what Candice stands for. People like Evan, AJ, like this is about generosity and how do we create change in the world and the way that we're doing business. So, Dane, I'm going to have you hop off and then I'm going to go ahead and wrap up and close with the rest of the stuff. Thank you, Dane. Yeah. One thing I'll just mention, Dane, before you drop off, what you are all about and what you've been speaking into for the last hour and a half is exactly why Breakthrough Accelerator exists. So, so the stars have aligned to bring you to us today. And, and for those of you who got value, you created value for so many people on this call today. Thank you for your generosity. And we will be definitely seeing more of you at Breakthrough Accelerator mm -hmm. because we, we, are meant, we are meant to cross paths. Thank you. Great. You're welcome. Bye, Candice. Good job, guys. See ya. Got it. Thanks, Dane. Um, Candice, do you have the poll for uh, feedback Ooh. by any chance? So uh, as, I, as I launch this poll, um, one of the things that we're asking you as the, the attendees of these webinars to rate is rate the speaker because we are interviewing each of these speakers to be the faculty members for Breakthrough Accelerator. So, so we're gonna start asking you what your review is so that we can determine how to get the best faculty for you in the Accelerator this fall. Yeah, and if you think Dane's message was powerful or you've been a part of the other webinar series, you know, what would it be like to have these type of people on your team, whether if it's starting your new, your new, your new idea or taking your business to the next level. You know, we get to have other people's skill sets. That's why we're here and bringing it to the world. We get to have other people's time as well as the money, but there's no more important ingredient than who is the O behind the other people. And that's the generosity. That's the impact. That's the ripple effect. And that's what we believe in here. We are here to change the way that the world's doing business because everyone gets to have financial and emotional abundance in the business, the employees, humanity, and the planet. So also set up time for a free consult. The webinar series keeps happening every Friday. Next week, uh, Candice, is it YouTube Mastery or is it the panel? Like we actually have the full the panel, panel. The panel discussion next week. And you can sign up at breakthroughaccelerate.com, the bottom of that page. You can sign up for next week's webinar. We'd love to see you all there. Yeah, absolutely. So sign up for a free consult and uh, thank you so much for showing up. Share it and let's change the world in business together. Anything else, Candice? I, I just acknowledge each of you for your vision. Mm -hmm. So you came and played a big game today, entrepreneurs. And I, I am totally enrolled in what you're up to. So Michelle, April, Mika, Jean, Doug, like Mindy, I thank you for showing up so powerfully today. Can you feel yourself getting stronger week to week? Because I'm certainly experiencing it. And so thank you. Thank you for continuing to show up so powerfully for yourselves. And we'll see you again next week. Got it. Love you, everyone. Thank you guys so much. Absolutely. Bye. Thank you, guys.